straight A's, honor student, played sports, everything, loving son, big brother. In the last hours, we learn 13-year-old Derek Rosa has confessed to murdering his mother as she lay in bed asleep right beside her, her new infant baby girl. Not only do we learn about a confession, we have obtained that confession to play for you. And at the same time, we learn that just emerging is nanny cam video of the room where the mom is murdered and him hovering over his sleeping mother. I'm Nancy Grace. This is Crime Stories. Thank you for being with us here at Crime Stories and on Sirius XM 111. I want you to take a listen and comb through this statement by the honor student son, Derek Rosa. Let's hear it. And tonight, who was all there? Me, my mom, and my sister. Okay. So you went to sleep around 10? 10. Okay. And then what? I woke up. I went to the kitchen. I grabbed one of the kitchen items, and then I went to our room, and then I ate. It's okay, you guys are ahead. You kill her. You kill her? All right. Did you hear that? He couldn't bring himself to say... I killed her until the detective said, it's okay, you can say it. And he said, I killed her. I killed her. Wow. Alexis Tereschuk joining me, CrimeOnline.com investigative reporter. Alexis Tereschuk, it's really hard to take in what we're hearing. You have a son, like I do. I have a son and daughter. And they're honor students. And they really, were some wood for me to knock on? so far have not given me a minute of trouble like your sweet boy and then out of the blue this aberrant behavior but what can you tell me about this confession and it is a confession so derek rosa actually called 911 himself the night of october 12th about 11 30 at night called the police himself. He said, come, I have killed my mom. The police take him to the police station. They talk with him. They say, what happened? And his, his explanation is, I woke up, I grabbed one of the kitchen knives, and I went to her room. And then he stops. But he doesn't stop forever. The police officer says, it's okay, you can talk to me. And he says, I killed her. He fully confessed to killing his mom. He didn't say why. He, but he is, mm. he in fact, took pictures of himself immediately after he I killed her. I want to follow he up on something Alexis Tereschuk has just told us. Joining me in all-star panel, but in addition to Alexis Tereschuk, Pat Diaz is with us out of the Florida jurisdiction as well. Former Miami Day police homicide detective, now private investigator, and you can find him at South FLPI, South Florida PI.com, South FLPI.com. Pat, thank you for being with us. You have to take special precautions when you are interviewing as a cop a juvenile. Explain. Absolutely. In these types of cases, and that many investigators get that opportunity when you have a juvenile to interview, you got to make sure that he's able of sound mind, which means he's understanding how to read, how to write, what which the process is, and for, or, in order to move on. Otherwise, if he's in a daze, then you have nothing. And in this case, the, the homicide detectives did a great job uh, talking to him and actually getting him to talk. So uh, kudos to them, because in court, the, the confession is going to be a major issue oh, that the yes. defense will try to... To try to get rid of. You're right, Pat Diaz. That's their number one goal at trial. They're going to try to have this confession thrown out. And when it comes to minors making a confession, um, it also came to the forefront in the Teresa Hallback murder. 
Who is that? That is the young photographer that was murdered by the star of Making a Murderer. Remember that? Stephen Avery. And it was portrayed that he was innocent, that Avery had been framed. Also along for the ride was his young relative, Brendan Dassey. In Dassey's case, there was permission to interview Dassey, a then teen. And as much as everyone argued, well, Dassey didn't have the wherewithal to make this statement, that's a double-edged sword. Because what it also means is he didn't have the wherewithal to create a fabricated statement with this much detail in which he admitted to raping Teresa Hallback and that his uncle murdered her, Stephen Avery. That was an example of a teen statement coming to the forefront of the news. And now so this, Nancy, jump in. So Nancy, uh, you know, the thing is, you know, the court is going to have to scrutinize whether or not um, Derek Rosa voluntarily spoke to the police and whether he was properly Mirandized because a, a juvenile, there's heightened responsibilities with regard to law enforcement in terms of Mirandizing, making sure they understand, contacting parents. And this is a 13-year-old boy, and of course he's accused of killing his mother. So that's going to make it even a little more convoluted in terms of was anybody contacted on his behalf before they, they spoke with him? And did, did he waive his Miranda rights? And did he understand and completely uh, voluntarily make the statement? So those are all issues that the court is going to have to scrutinize with regard to his statement. You are hearing high-profile lawyer Matthew Mangino joining us out of the Pennsylvania jurisdiction. He has prosecuted juveniles and defended juveniles. He's former district attorney and author of The Executioner's Toll. Listen to this. The crimes, arrests, trials, appeals, and last meals. Final words and executions of 46 people in the U.S. Um, let's listen to more why this statement is so important to the prosecution. Take a listen. What type of, what type of name was it? Do you know? It's a huge knife. That big? Yeah. What color was the, the, the handle? Purple? Yes. Okay. Uh, your Stephen? Yes, you're sleeping. Now, this is important, what you just heard, because... Here, the honor student, 13-year-old Derek Rosa, is explaining about the knife. He says, it's a big seven-inch knife with a purple handle. My mom was sleeping. He's fully cognizant of all the facts surrounding the murder of his own mother. His mom had just given birth to the baby sister. And in the nanny cam video, you see him hovering around the mom and around the baby sister who's sleeping in the same room with the mom. Listen to more. How many friends did you call? What's his name? I don't know. He's an online friend. He's an online friend, yeah. When you say online friend, what do you mean from video games? Yes, from video games. I know it's all well. Okay, and how long have you known him? Since that was 10. Three years. Three years? Have you ever met him? No, no, I've seen the face. You've seen his face? Yeah. So how did you communicate with him? My cell phone. Okay, let me understand what I'm just hearing. Alexis Tereschuk joining us, CrimeOnline.com investigative reporter. He called his friends, explain, and, and I'm hearing where are the friends, and they are in Sweden. These are friends that he's met online. So these are not schoolmates. These are not kids that he hangs out with after school. These are kids that he's met online and or friends that he's met online. So he he messages them afterwards. He sends three pictures. He shows, in fact, their whole, his hands held up and there was blood dripping on his hands. So he, he is bragging about this crime immediately after committing it. I, I killed my mom. Look, here's the, here's the bloody proof of it. 
I mean, it would have been a lot different. Let me go to Karen Stark joining us, renowned psychologist, uh, TV, radio trauma expert at KarenStark.com. Karen with a C. Karen, it's one thing if he's calling the friend or texting the friend and saying, oh, my stars, uh, I've done this horrible thing. What am I going to do? Or I can't believe I did this. But according to Alexis Tereschuk, he's kind of bragging. He's not just bragging, Nancy. He sticks out his tongue. He's smiling. He was actually excited about what he did. So this this boy is a very, very confused adolescent. He absolutely doesn't understand how awful his crime is, as far as I could tell, because he's laughing and excited and showing the blood. Laughing and excited and showing the blood. Alexis Tereschuk, is that true? Yes, it's absolutely true. He's showing off the blood on his hands because he stabbed his mom. He was very close to her. He didn't shoot her. He was right next to her. And in fact, he had been searching online for the place, places and the best places to stab where it would cause the most harm. So this was something that he had been looking up prior to killing his mom. Alexis Tereschuk, you're just a fountain of information, aren't you? And none of it good. Well, I guess it's good if you're looking at uh, the, Nancy, probative ma- the probative nature of it, like what does it prove? But it's very disheartening, Alexis Tereschuk, as a mom of a young teen, very similar to Derek Rosa, honor student, sweet-natured, mild, timid, seemingly, but suddenly out of the blue... Um, I don't know what to make of that. And he went to a good school. There was, there were never any complaints. He seemed very excited that his mom was having a baby. The baby was only two weeks old, a little sister. He had posed for pictures with the fam- with his stepdad and with his mom when she was pregnant, really all in pink polo shirts, showing off how excited they were about the baby. There were no signs ahead of time, nothing at school. Nobody had ever said that he was in trouble. No fights with friends, no fights with the parents. CPS hadn't been called to the home completely to everybody outside of it, out of the blue. Karen, you were jumping in, Karen Stark. I I wanted to add, and we've heard this kind of stuff before, but not from a young adolescent, that he said that he wanted to shoot himself afterwards, that he wanted to kill himself. And of course, that didn't happen. But he didn't. But and speaking add. of those right. Google searches, take a listen to this. The night Derek Rosa allegedly stabs his mother to death, he makes six Google searches that include, what is the best place to stab someone? Is a small knife good for killing? Is it easier to kill someone with a small knife? Can a knife cut through bone? And a request for a diagram of the cardioid artery. The Daily Mail reports the last search made that night was to inquire about a machine gun. I mean, he's looking up the carotid artery. Dr. Kendall Crown's joining us. Uh, chief medical examiner joining us out of Tarrant County, that's Fort Worth, lecturer, University of Texas, Austin, and TCU, Texas Christian University Medical School. Dr. Kendall Crowns, uh, I, I don't know how you do it all. How many autopsies do you think you have performed in life? Uh, probably close to around 10,000. You know, when when people ask me how many cases I've handled, and I say around 10,000, it doesn't seem real. But when you look back, it is real, because I would get 100 new cases a week uh, from the grand jury, uh, at, at least, or even if you wanted to go by a month, and you do that every month for 10 years, yes, that's a lot. Same with you. You don't count them as they're happening, but you look back and realize, wow, that's a lot of autopsies. And in your experience, could you explain, is there any way to recover when someone has their carotid artery severed? Let's just start. What is the carotid artery? So the carotid artery is a a vessel in your neck that is taking blood from your heart to your brain, basically. And you have two of them, one on either side of your neck, and they're 
they're pretty good size. They're uh, about the big around as a as a ballpoint pen diameter. So and they sit right underneath the muscles on either side of your neck. So they're really close to the surface. So when you get your carotid artery cut, uh, you usually can bleed out in a matter of minutes. How many minutes? Uh, they have, I'd say, under four. And question, we've all seen movies. Um, I've actually seen a victim whose carotid artery had been sliced, but it was post-mortem after death. Is this the kind of wound, basically, there's no coming back from that, but is it, does, does the wound pulse with the beating of the heart? Yes. Yeah. So it's uh, it's an artery, so it has the pressurized blood is still there, so it will spurt and shoot blood out of it. You can try and close it off because you have a second one. It'll still get blood to the brain. So you can pinch it off and you can still be saved, but you have to get immediate medical treatment. Uh, the good example is there was a hockey player recently got his yeah. neck sliced by a, a skate, and he died even though he had help right away. So it's it's a significant vessel to get cut and you need help immediately and even if you get help immediately they can't always save you. And the reason I'm asking about the pulsing nature of the bleeding is because the boy in this case, 13 year old honor student Derek Rosa was literally covered in blood. It was a an extremely bloody crime scene. Is that why Dr. Crowns? It's part of it. I mean, she'll, she would be, uh, the blood would be spurting out. It would be getting all over her, all over the plate, even on him. And if he continues to stab her, it would be getting on him as he continued to stab her. And then whatever else he's stabbing would also bleed oh. on him as well. Okay, let's hear more of what we've recently obtained, the actual confession given by this teen honor student. Listen. Did you... I want to talk about his demeanor as he's relaying killing his mom. I mean, Karen Stark, I think I need a trauma expert right now because um, when I think back about when my dad passed away or when my fiance Keith was, was murdered, even now, I typically don't like talking about it. I don't like when people bring it up, um, especially unexpectedly. But I, if I allow myself to think about it, it's still very, very upsetting. And this honor student is talking very um, methodically and stoically. He doesn't seem upset at all. Nancy, what you're describing, what you feel or I feel having lost a dad, we're having feelings, right? Emotions. But now we're talking about someone who's disassociated, which means okay, that I don't know what he's that means. separated from his feelings. He's, he's not in touch with any emotional response. And it's really hard to understand what's going on with this boy because of that. It's confusing because he doesn't seem to, he's laughing afterwards. He doesn't seem to be having any kind of an emotional response, like he's cut off. And usually that happens with somebody who is has a criminal mentality, who has no feelings, no conscience, and doesn't understand what they did. And the oh, whoa, 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 wait a minute, yeah, right yeah. there. When you say the words, doesn't understand what they did, 
you're triggering all sorts of legal alarm bells in my mind because if someone know, doesn't understand what they did, translation, doesn't understand right from wrong, that is the legal definition of insanity. This kid is not insane. He's not insane. He's not insane, but, he, but he's cut off from, I don't believe that he gets, he grasps the full extent of what happened until it seems like now he doesn't want to yeah, say Yeah, well, so you know what? Mother. That's you he, putting he your layer of interpretation on him. He doesn't understand. Yes. He took the pictures covered in blood and sent them to two of his friends online. He understands. He killed his mom. She's dead. She's not coming back. And as a matter of fact, I want you to hear a little bit more of what he said. Listen to our Cut 21. We're still hearing the recently obtained confession by the 13-year-old honor student who stabs his mom dead. She's lying next to her infant baby girl. Listen. Let's get back to your mom. Okay, you said she was sleeping. Yes. Okay. Where exactly did you cut her? At first, I cut her with my chin. And then I, this is like the type of vein, like what's your name right here on both sides. Okay. And I stab you, uh, but I should stab right Do you know what that, that's called? Like an artery or something. An artery? Yeah. Okay. And and um, you purposely went for the artery? When you? I purposely went for the artery. Okay. Was there a lot of blood after? There was like a ton of blood on the floor. Okay. Um, did you tell her anything before you stabbed her? Did you say anything? Yes, curse words in Spanish. Curse words in Spanish? Yes. And, but she didn't wake up when you... She was asleep, and she was asleep when you stabbed her. Yes, and then she woke up after a second. Okay, let me understand what I'm hearing. Alexis Terezchuk joining us from CrimeOnline.com. He's saying that he said a curse word to his mom in Spanish. It was Marican, which is a homosexual slur. To my understanding, that's what he said. Is that correct? Yes. It's just, it, it's mind-boggling that this child says that he's, he said this, this bad thing to her, and then he stabs her 48 times while she's sleeping. And I feel like it, it's, it's, something important to point out that she was fully asleep in her bed and, and really didn't even fight back because this was so quick and so violent because within he it was right at 11 as the nanny cam or the, the baby monitor cam shows it was set up to look in the crib which was right next to the bed and he is shown there at 11 o'clock and then 30 minutes later he's already sent messages to his friends and he's already called the police this was super fast she was not awake she really didn't even fight back against this because he was so strong and he's he's not a big kid he's still like a, a young tween he's so young and and not a big hulking child or anything like that he's skinny skinny arms and yet managed to do all of this but yes he says that he he said something he called her a bad word in spanish yeah, I, I, I don't so, even understand well, the context. Is that Matthew Mangino? Jump in. Yes. So, so Nancy, I mean, obviously, you know, this is a crime of rage. I don't know how this slur uh, works into this, the overall intent here. But, you know, to stab somebody, your mother, 48 times, you're really, uh, you know, enraged. I mean, you're, you're, you're. Wanted to do, uh, and what you know, is that supposed to mean damage, to me to, that he's enraged? That's not a defense, so I don't care. You can't well, say, no, "Oh, I did it, but I was angry." Angry is not a defense, Matthew Mangino. Well, I'd like to know why a 13-year-old boy would 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 make a homosexual slur toward his mother and stab her 48 times. It, um, you know, you know, yeah, he's like 13 to years old, too, he, but unless it rises to insanity. It doesn't mm -hmm. change the outcome of these facts. If he's legally insane, then he should not go to jail. Absolutely not. If he's not, then he should. Yeah, but he, but he, he's 13 years old, Nancy. And, and in Florida, you know, unless a grand jury indicts you, what's happened here, you can't even charge a 14-year-old um, you know, with, with murder. I mean, you know, I mean a 13-year-old, you, you know, well, under, under the age of 14. 
So, yeah. So Again, any, what does know, that have to do with what we're discussing? Yes, it's going to have to be a grand jury indictment, and it was. So? And Nancy, can I add one thing else about this? Please do. Is this Pat Diaz? Yes, it's Pat Diaz. Jump and in. One of the things that we have to remind ourselves is in South Florida, law enforcement puts that video on the minute they walk into the room, and it doesn't turn off until the end. So you're capturing everything he says from the minute he's the detectives talk to him. So that makes that confession very important. Now, having had cases uh, of an individual this young who, who committed a murder many years ago, we know that it's going to go to the grand jury. We know there's going to be doctors involved. But when it comes to his statement, it's going to be clearly seen and it's clearly seen. That's why they released all this video showing that he did understand he was saying what happened clearly. He wasn't confused. He wasn't even showing any emotion. Um, and the important thing is to know that the video doesn't turn off and on. It stays on the entire time. So I think that's an important aspect of this case. That in South Florida, the police, we videotape from the minute they come in to the end. There is no break in the video. There's no So there's no pre, you know, questioning like they used to do in the old days. No, from the minute he comes in and sits down, that video turns on. I'm glad to hear that. Issue. I'm glad to hear that. And guys, speaking of that video, uh, we've just obtained. Take a listen to more. And then she woke up. Yes. And did you say anything else to her? Did she say anything to you or not? She's screaming. She just screamed. Um. Why did you stab your mom? Man, saved by the bell. The million dollar question. Why did you stab your mom? Uh, can I go to the bathroom? That's what happened. And this is what happens when he comes back from the bathroom. Listen. So if you were about to tell me the why, why did you uh, kill your mother? Do you know So we never get the answer, why did you stab your mom? Uh, of course, the lawyers are doing backflips to get this confession thrown out of evidence, and they want it sealed so no one can ever see it. Listen to our friend Nicole Parton. Attorneys failed at keeping the police interview sealed, and in the interview, Rosa tells officers he had fallen asleep. When he woke up, he goes to the kitchen, grabs a knife, and begins stabbing his mother while she sleeps. His mother wakes up and screams, but his little sister did not wake up during the attack. Mm. So the defense lawyers wanted it sealed so we could never see it, but they failed. Why is that, Matthew Mangino? Is it... The FOIA, Freedom of Information Act, is it uh, that Florida has the sunshine law? Everything's out in the open. Why was this released? Well, I mean, there, there has to be, um, you know, a, a reason, uh, a sufficient reason for the court to seal a record. Um, obviously, if, if there is a, a statement that's made that's relevant, I mean, the courts always want to be open as much as possible. They, they want uh, the opportunity for the public to be able to scrutinize what's, what goes on in the courtroom and what's, what's uh, part of right. the record. So there really has to be some compelling reason to seal a record, uh, maybe because it would uh, you know, in, uh, uh, embarrass people who aren't directly related to the case and things like that. So uh, I'm not surprised. That, that well, it, another that thing is, if this does go to trial, this will be introduced. 
I believe. So therefore, it's not something that may never come to the jury's purview. This will come before a jury. It's not like the judge is unsealing something that a jury should not or would not know about. Right. They're going to see this exactly. and they're going to hear this. But it's not necessarily just this that I believe Der uh, makes me believe Derek Rosa will be convicted for murdering his mother, stabbing her 48 times. It's not just what he did at the time of the stabbing. It's what he did after. Take a listen to Rachel Bonilla, Crime Online Cut 33. When officers arrive at the scene of the attack, they find Garcia left splayed on the floor with dozens of knife wounds, including a slashed artery in her neck. Laying near her deceased mother is her two-week-old baby, still laying in her crib. As part of the grisly display, the Daily Mail reports 13-year-old Derek Rosa takes a smiling selfie, sticking his tongue out with what appears to be blood smeared on his hands. Rosa sends the photo to a friend right after the killing. Okay, that visual is something I'm not going to get out of my mind anytime soon, Karen Stark. Well, Nancy, I mean, that makes perfect sense because we're talking about a 13-year-old who seemingly has no conscience whatsoever. I mean, he's actually enjoying the fact that he just did that. And that's really hard for everybody to really comprehend. How can that be that this boy who was an honor student had no history of any kind of violence, wakes up in the night and decides to kill his mother and they find her on the floor. She even wakes up and she screams and he doesn't pay attention. He could care less. And then he's rejoicing. You have been hearing a recently obtained confession by the honor student accused of stabbing his mother 48 times. Now, interesting, he left the baby sister. There's been a lot of speculation that he was angry that his mom had had a baby, that he was now having to split her affections with the baby. And he actually addresses the baby in the original 911 call. Take a listen. Now, you've heard Derek Rosa speaking to investigators. Listen to him on his original 911 call after he stabs his mother and sends bloody selfies to his friends. He calls 911. Take a listen to our cut one. 911, what's that? This will be your emergency. Okay. Where else did you stop her other than that you're cutting her neck? Where is your sister? She's in her crib sleeping. I how, cannot see her. How old is your sister? She's only like a week old. Okay, and you did not touch her, correct? No, I did not touch you. I didn't want to touch my sister. I need to know if your mom is, is breathing. She said, Miss. I have the gun with me. I was going to shoot myself, but I didn't want to. I didn't want to. I pulled back the slide, but I did not shoot. Okay, let me understand something. Pat Diaz, it's almost as if he wants an A-plus for not murdering his sister, his baby sister as well. So I'm trying to make sense of him almost bragging, no, I didn't want to hurt my sister, but yet I stabbed my mom exactly. 48 times. Exactly, and and this is without his confession alone. The, big, the phone call, when the jury would hear his phone call, is enough to convict him. But just the fact that his mental state of mind, that he was able to articulate what he did, makes a huge difference when it goes in front of a grand jury or in front of a jury, period. Um, and, and that's what everybody is going to see and hear is how he articulates what happened and what he did do and what he didn't do. So he basically gave a second confession independent of the police. So that's another issue that the defense attorneys will have to deal with in court. You're right, Pat Diaz. The confession he gave to police, which has all been recorded, which we've played for you now, is corroborating, as Pat Diaz has just pointed out, the 911 call. He describes not only stabbing his mother, not touching his infant sister, but he goes on to describe what he did after the murder. Take a listen to our cut to the 911 original call. I need to know, do you okay. think we can help your mom? Miss, she's dead. 
I have more family members. They can take care of my sister. I took pictures and I told my friends about it. Was that bad? You told who about it? My friends. Your friends? Did you send pictures to your friends? So what you did? Yeah, I didn't delete the pictures off my phone, but I sent them to him. And I told him that I was sorry, and then I let's go by. I'm okay. I'm okay. Really I'm really sorry. I'm okay. It's all about him. I mean, Matthew Mangino, the law is very clear, and I'm quoting directly the black and white letter of the law. One may immediately regret the deed, but that regret does not negate intent at the time of the act, Matthew Mangino. Well, yeah, I mean, the in intent is what you form before you act. Um, you know, what your regret after you've acted uh, does not negate the intent uh, to kill. So certainly, um, you know, you, you may have regretted it, but you formed the proper intent to carry it out and you did carry it out. So, uh, that is in no way a defense. Maybe it's mitigation in some way, but it, but it's not a defense. Also, he goes on in further detail to describe sending the bloody selfies to friends. What do you think a jury's going to make of this? Listen, our cut 12. I need to know if your mom is, is breathing. She's dead, miss. There's blood all over the floor. Okay, why did you kill your mom? I need to know, do she's you dead. think we can help your mom? Miss, she's dead. Can you bring uh, the police over here where I live? What is your address? Miss. Yes. I took pictures and I told my friends about it. Was that bad? You told who about it? My friends. Your friends? Did you send pictures to your friends? So what you did? Yeah. Do not open until I tell you to open the door. And to make sure that you have nothing but your cell phone in your hands. Miss, are they going to kill me? No, they're not going to kill you. We're here to help you, okay? We're going to help your family, okay? In addition to these recordings, there is heart-stopping baby cam video showing this Florida honors student, age 13, standing over his mother's bed just an instant before he stabbed her dead as a newborn sister is sleeping nearby. Now, again, the last time that Derek Rosa appears in court, his father is asking for leniency and mercy, just as he did before. Take a listen to Jose Rosa in court. It's hard for us to explain how this occurred. Um, you know, it's, it's difficult, but I guess what we're asking for is a, another opportunity. It's a second chance to help him grow and become mature as a grown man to, to put this behind him and say, mm, we have your back. We're here to support you. It's very unfortunate that this tragedy occurred, but this child is very humble, very peaceful. That may all be true, but he is also a killer, which leaves prosecutors and judges in the horrible position of trying to figure out what is the right thing to do. And I have faced that on many, many occasions. What is the right thing to do? And Karen Stark, you and I very often disagreed because when I'm overwhelmed trying to make a right decision, like in a plea negotiation or uh, suggesting a sentence, recommending a sentence at the end of a trial, when I don't know what to do, I directly follow the black and white letter of the law. And under the law, if he is not insane, he must go to prison. Of course, a juvenile facility until he's 21, and then he would finish out his sentence um, in an adult facility after he is of age. Well, Nancy, but the thing is, this is a 13-year-old. He's not an adult. So this is where it becomes very difficult to decide what to do because you can't even give a diagnosis of psych psychopathy when you're talking about someone who's 13. You can talk about conduct disorder with um, callous and unemotional traits, which is where I would say this. this you know what? There'll be no way. You know what, Karen Stark? You bring him home to your 
penthouse apartment in Manhattan and you let him stay there because everybody that says he needs lenient treatment, you take him home, okay? Because yeah, there's no way in H E W -L, L that I would have him around my children. Now, is that harsh? Yes. Is it true? Yes. And very often, the truth doesn't taste very good going down. But I mean, Alexis Tereschuk, you want to bring him home and let him babysit for your baby? It, no. Nancy, oh, hell no. And he's, actually being held, he's actually being held in an adult jail right now. But he is segregated from the population. And it's because of the charge that he, that he has. Alexis Tereschuk, what is next for this honor student killer? Well, he's supposed to go to trial in March. This is supposed to start very quickly. His defense attorney just the other day requested to go back to the apartment by themselves and take videos and pictures for their, their side of the case. The judge really, and the prosecutors really fought against this, but the judge allowed it. So the defense team went to the apartment. They were allowed to be in there for three hours and the prosecutors were not allowed in there with them. And then that is all they can do there because the stepfather has given up the lease for the apartment. He says he wants to move. He cannot be there anymore. It's, it's way too painful for him. So he's moving on. And they are still, the, his lawyers are still trying to work with the um, prosecutors because they do not want him tried as an adult. But as mm -hmm. of right now, he's going to be tried as an adult. It's going to be a plea. Watch. We wait as justice unfolds. Goodbye, friend. Guys, thank you for watching Crime Online with Nancy Grace here on YouTube. To get the very latest, subscribe to Crime Online here.